Good to see you. <laughs> Are you tired? Not really. I'm uh, sore. <laughs> now, see, w the way it looked to me, I mean, he would move his arm up, and it didn't look like he could actually have any power behind those punches. Can he still hit? Yeah, George is the hard-hitting guy I ever fought really? in my life. Um, they look like they slow motion, but when they hit you, you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> How about the low blows? How did that affect you? Well, uh, <laughs> maybe back and back. Yeah. Boy, because uh, he got penalized at one point for low blows. Yeah, he kept hitting, um, and each and every time he hit me, he would apologize. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> really? In the ring, he would say? Yeah, he would apologize for it. Yeah. But you, you think he was really sorry? <laughs> I guess when you look at it, the damage is already done, though. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of gives you an edge, you know? As you, you know, you hit somebody low and say you're sorry, and it's like, you know, and even the point, taking away points don't, because you're like, I mean, that has to, it, a punch from a, a heavyweight boxer to the head, if that knocks you out, what does that do? What, you know? What, oh, my. Take, take it out your legs. Out your legs. Oh, really? Yes, it make your leg weak. Yeah, you, you told me last night, um, uh, Evander came to a Laker game, and we talked for a minute. You said you hit him someplace, and you actually heard him make a noise that w would kill any other man. Well, I hit him. I hit him. I hit him with a left to the body, and you know, I knew I hurt him because he did grunt when I hit him with the left. <laughs> yeah. But you know, afterwards he just like I said, I got him. I go for it again, and there you go. He throw the big right hand. I had to move out the way. Wow. W were you shocked at, at a certain point? Were you like glad you trained? Well, I trained anyway, and I felt that um, because of George Foreman, you know, his belief was so strong, he used to be a preacher, I knew he'd be praying, and I felt that's well. That probably would make the fight even for us, you know, having the church members split up by who they're going to pray for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, when we got into the fight, it's like a determination he had, like, really surprised me. Uh, you know, I hit him with shots that I knew would take other people out, and the guy just kept coming. Yeah. Uh, last night, I noticed that you had a Dove bar. I got a feeling the way you was eating it, that's the first time you had sweets since training. Because, I mean, he ate, I, I, and we see what great shape he's in when he fights. And you know you have to make sacrifices. Last night at the game, you know, a, you know what a Dove bar is? He ate a Dove bar like he had been starving for like 20, 30, it was like, I don't think you even saw it again. You was eating, how, how many of them did you eat? I ate two. Yeah. <laughs> yes. George had a lot of Dove bars, but that was probably your first. Huh? Well, you know, I hadn't had any sweets for like about six weeks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I deserved that. Yeah. What kind of food did you eat this time? Uh, Lee Haney told me about your last diet. Well, pretty much I, I, I stick to the same diet. I eat protein diet. I eat a lot of black eyed peas, cornbread, and greens. And a lot of people say, well, that's bad for your heart, but it worked for me. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do what works for you. Um, did you train any different this time for George? Only thing different is uh, my sparring partner. I had four sparring partners, and all of them were 240 and, and more. And they were strong, and they were, had got accustomed to bigger guy pushing me all over the ring. Yeah. Uh, at the end, when you all were just holding each other, um, what was on your mind? <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, I, you know, I guess right at 30 seconds uh, in the 12th round, and, um, and my corner was hollering out, real deal, let me know it's 30 seconds. I said, well, he ain't no luck up and win. I'm going to hold him. Yeah. So I kept holding him, people kept booing. And I was saying to myself, no, I ain't going to lose the fight because y'all booing. And yeah. I kept holding him when the fight was over. And, and you know, he, he told me he appreciated the opportunity. And uh, he said he felt that I won the fight. Yeah. Um, he whispered something to you at the end, and I, I guess that was that comment. Yes. And he whispered something to you at the beginning. What did he say to you? Well, I... Uh, in the beginning, he said the same thing. Thanks for the opportunity and try to hit me with a right hand. <laughs> <laughs> when he was champion, you were what, about 10 years old? I was right at about 9 or 10. Yeah. Was it hard 
to beat him up? Because there was a point where there was a young lady in the room that I was watching the fight in, and um, there was a point where you, I mean, you start tattooing that head, you know, and, and she was like, oh, my. You know, was there a point where you felt, I can't hit this guy like this no more? Not at all. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> With George Foreman, this is a matter of life and death when you're there. I'm like, when a guy hits you, he knocks you all across the ring, and 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 he, he have his confidence is so great and how strong he punch. You can see it when he swing it, and he hits you, and he know that you're supposed to go down. And I can see that when he hit me and I didn't go down, I, he would just look at me and like, look at the ground like I'm supposed to be on the ground. And so, it, no doubt in my mind, and with no sympathy in there, I knew I had a job to do and first job is not to get hurt, but, you know, to put it on him, man, you know, that's what I went out to do. Yeah. Not only did he have to go 12 rounds with George Foreman, but then he got to the parking lot and Larry Holmes jumped off a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's tough what you have to go through these days in boxing. <laughs> I think that's the question in everybody's mind. What's wrong with Larry Holmes? <laughs> What's on his mind right now? Have you met him? I met Larry Holmes, man, and I, th and I think right now by George Foreman, Getting that opportunity, hey, bringing all these guys that used to be the champion, everybody want to come back mm -hmm. and get a piece of the action. I just have to be the guy that everybody think can beat. And well, I could beat Holyfield if I can't beat nobody else. Yeah. Why do they think that? Because you're a small heavyweight? Because I'm a small heavyweight, and they said, well, the guy's nice and he's quiet, and I can beat him. But don't nobody ever want to fight Tyson, but they want to fight me. Yeah. Well, that brings up an interesting question. Um, I went to the comedy store after the game last night, and I'm, I'm watching this comic perform. And he said something interesting. He said, uh, Evander went 12 rounds with a 40-whatever year. He mentioned the age of Foreman. And he said, he better not book that fight with Tyson. H are you hearing stuff like that now? All the time. Uh, I feel that um, a lot of people think I fight, I cannot beat Tyson because I would be him. And what they don't understand, I didn't, I didn't come to champion fearing anybody. Tyson's is just like uh, the rest of the fighters. And I feel that, you know, he happened to be one of the great ones. And I don't mind fighting him at any given time. When I was a challenge and he was a champion, I did everything that it took to get the opportunity to fight him. Now that I'm the champ uh, with Don King, they don't want to go the route of getting the opportunity. They don't want to take the time out and talk to my promoter at main events and come up with the right figures for the fight. They want to be in charge, but be the challenger. Mm -hmm. Like that, I'm willing to fight Tyson at any given time. Mm -hmm. I'm free of bone in my body. Okay, so let me, let me understand this now, because I've been confused as to why the Tyson fight hasn't been coming along. Um, Don King, Duva mentioned something about Don King after this last fight, and he, I, something to the effect of wanting Don King out of the way. What is the exact problem with Don King in negotiating this fight? Well, I'm the champ, and the champ gets 75 percent, and the challenger get 25. Don King wants Tyson get 50, where he can get past, and he wants me to take 50. And uh, when I was a challenger, Tyson gonna get 75, and I gonna get 25. And everybody, everybody played that role as a challenger to take 25 percent. Mm -hmm. Now that Tyson is the challenger, Don King don't, Don King don't want it that way. He wants Tyson to be able to get half. Yeah, so are they going to fight Ruddick again? Well, that's their plan. Yeah, and who will you fight next? I don't know. I'm willing to fight anybody that's in the top ten. Hopefully, if that don't come about, Tyson and I will end up fighting uh, this fall. Yeah. Um, when Foreman was young, I saw him get beat by this guy, Jimmy somebody. Jimmy Young. Jimmy Young. Now, Jimmy Young in my opinion, wasn't as good a fighter or as great an athlete as you. How was Jimmy Young able to do that to a younger foreman? Well, you know, by my overall views of the fight, I felt that Jimmy Young uh, had made, um, made George Foreman miss a lot of punches, and George Foreman at that time uh, really wasn't a thinking fighter. He just went out and just threw all home runs and found himself running out of gas, and so he actually beat himself, and and uh, Jimmy Young was able to capitalize on his mistakes and was able to um, get him exhausted and, you know, won a decision. Yeah. So, Foreman's a smarter fighter now, or maybe it's Archie Moore in his corner. 
Well, yeah, you can't take credit from Foreman because he's the man that's out there doing it. And, of course, Archie Moore's a smart guy, too. And I think with, with age, you get smarter. And he realized what he had, and he used it to the best of his ability. Yeah. Okay. Um, will you fight Foreman ever again? I can't say never, but I, I, I don't have any plans of going that route. <laughs> but I, yeah, if the money's right, I fight. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a tough payday. I mean, the good thing about it, though, is I think you both won. It was like a victory for both of you, you know? Well, I feel that uh, we both won. And I, I feel that when you pray hard, the Lord always shows you a way. And in, in that fight, the former was able to get, he was able to, get across that 42 years old is not a death sentence. He proved that at 42 years old, you still have dreams, you still have hope, and that don't take away from your desire. And with myself, I felt that, you know, as a young man and, and as skillful I was that, you know, at 42, regardless to the age, that it wasn't going to take it away from my ability. I was, uh, I was able to go out and perform. I felt that I did a good job. I did knock him out, but most of all, I won, and I felt that I did it in good fashion. Yeah. Um, since I first met you, uh, you've become uh, an eligible bachelor. Because uh, <laughs> you, are, you are divorced now, right? Not exactly. Not, 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 exactly. not, not completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm wondering is, when you're going through this in your life, domestically, your love life, does it affect you? People used to talk about how the only person that beat Mike was Robin. You know, um, is, is it a, is, there's a fly. Is there a fly in this interview? Did you, uh, <laughs> um, how is that affecting your mind, your training, your whole career? Well, that, that don't, that really don't come to effect when I'm boxing. You know, I thank God for me to be able to concentrate when I, when I come down to boxing. Boxing is something that I really, truly love. And I think all blessings come from above. And, but when it comes down to that, marital situation or any other problem you know after boxing then I go back into what you call personal life problems that everybody else have and um, legally I just let the lawyer do his job and I pretty much uh, try to take his advice and try to do what's right yeah yeah um, one thing off the subject of boxing I know you're a basketball fan you were with the exception of the moment with the dove bar you were really uh, enjoying the game last night now you are an Atlanta Hawks fan yes but you spend a lot of time in Houston. Yes. Houston will be playing the Lakers in the first round of the playoffs. Who do you think will come out? Uh, sorry. Uh, who do you think will come out victorious in that situation? I think the team that um, team that 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 make the. Oh, don't be political now. Who do you think is going to win that round? Well, it should be a good game. I, I, in general, you know, I, the better team will win. <laughs> He's such a gentleman, he's hard to interview, you know? He's like, I'm not answering that. Okay, how about if Atlanta uh, and the Lakers get together? Well, um, you know, of course, um, the better team will win, but I'm hoping that Atlanta wins. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, continued success to you. And I don't know who's next, but uh, good luck. I think you may right. the best man win. And I will win. Or, or may the black guy win. <laughs> <laughs> Evander, the real deal. Holy field.